Hello again, everybody, and welcome to part two of the Complexity Explorer's tutor tutorial on game theory. For those of you that don't know, in the first part of the tutorial, we learned the foundations of game theory. We learned about actions, strategies, players, and we learned about the Nash Equilibrium Solution concept and solved a variety of games. This set of videos is going to be slightly different than the first set of videos. In the first set of videos, we really honed in on one specific element of game theory, and namely the normal form game in Nash Equilibrium. This set of videos is going to be more divided. We're kind of going to cover three different topics, I guess you can say. So the first thing we're going to cover is what is known as dynamic, or sometimes you hear them called sequential games. So the simplest example of a dynamic or a sequential game is something like a board game. Chess, checkers, backgammon, <clears throat> go. One player moves, then the next player moves, and then one player moves, and then the next player moves, and so on. Of course, there are other real-world examples of sequential games. Uh, just one example, you can think of geopolitical games. Uh, if one country does something, then another country might see what that country did, and then choose their action based on what that country did in the first place. So you say have country A acts and country B acts and then country A responds to country B and so on. So this would also be an example of a sequential game. In economics, we see sequential games in something like market entry. A firm decides to maybe enter a new market that another firm already has control of. And then the firm that previously had control of the market decides how to combat with the newly entered firm. So these are just some examples of sequential games. And I, I imagine that you can think of many games that would take place over time where players don't always act at the exact same time. So we're going to introduce what is known as the extensive form game. We're going to go through how these games are modeled. And then, of course, we're going to go through several examples and solve these games. So that's the first part. The second part of the tut this tutorial, we're going to look at what is known as bounded rationality. <clears throat> if you remember in the first part of the tutorial, we introduced some of the basic assumptions of game theory, and one was that players are fully rational. What this means is that players always know what's best for them, and they always choose that action. They never make a mistake. In this tutorial, we're going to attack that assumption in two different ways. First, I'm going to show some laboratory experiments where players are not actually completely rational and show that that assumption of full rationality is often violated. Then we're going to talk about what is known as the level K model of games. And this is just one way game theorists have started to think about bounded rationality. I want to emphasize there are many other ways, namely there's prospect theory and something known as quantal response equilibria. There are many ways that game theorists deal with bounded rationality. I'm just going to introduce one and, and references to the others can be found in the bibliography section. So that's the second part of the tutorial. And finally, in the third part, we're going to look at some software. So what I would like to do is just provide an example with software known as Gambit. The Gambit software can model and solve both normal form and sequential games. So basically, we're just going to go through an example. I'm going to show you how the software works, and then hopefully you can play with it on your own. The software is free. So feel free to download the software on your own personal computer. So this is the outline for this set of videos in the tutorial. And in the next video, we'll dive into dynamic games. Hope to see you there.